In a previous video, we have approximated the sample and hold circuit as a gain of 1. This approximation is a good one if the sampling frequency is high compared with the frequency content of the input signal. However, for a lower sampling frequency, the sample and hold circuit causes a significant delay. Since the delay that is introduced in the feedback loop of a control system usually causes a reduction in the damping of the closed loop system and could even cause the system to become unstable, it might be important to include the delay in the model of the control system. For this reason, we model this delay in today's video. The sample and hold circuit is shown here, where a continuous time signal is sampled to produce a sample signal which is then passed through a zero order hold circuit which in turn produces a continuous time signal. We have previously seen that this circuit is not linear or time invariant, so we cannot exactly represent it as a transfer function. We have approximated the transfer function from the input to the output as a unity gain, which is accurate if the sampling frequency is high compared with the frequency content of the input signal. However, we can set up a more accurate approximation, which might be useful when the sampling frequency is lower. For this more accurate approximation, we model the sample and hold as a delay of half a sampling period. This is represented by the transfer function e to the power minus t over 2 times s. To see why this is a reasonable approximation, let's look at the plot of the relevant signals. The blue line is the input signal and the green line is the output signal. If we approximate the sample and hold as a delay of half the sampling period, then the output is the red line. It is apparent that this delay captures one of the main effects of the sample and hold circuit. Another motivation for this approximation is shown here. In a previous video, we looked at the transfer function of the zero order hold circuit. The phase bode plot of it is shown here, where the phase decreases linearly from 0 to minus 180 degrees between 0 radians per second and the sampling frequency. Note that we use a linear frequency axis instead of the more usual logarithmic frequency axis. The phase shift of the half sampling period delay also decreases linearly from 0 to minus 180 degrees between 0 radians per second and the sampling frequency. The half sampling period delay therefore better captures the phase response of the sample and hold than the unity gain. The transfer function of our approximation is shown here, which is written in terms of the exponential function. This presents a problem since we often do control system analysis and design in terms of the poles and zeros of the system, and it is not possible to write this exponential transfer function in terms of a finite number of poles and zeros. For this reason, we make a further approximation called the Padet approximation. The Padet approximation approximates an exponential function as the ratio of two polynomials. There are several possible versions of the Padet approximation that we can use. For this module, we choose one of the simplest versions, where we approximate e to the power minus as as 1 divided by the polynomial 1 plus as. When we apply this to our half sampling period delay transfer function, we get this transfer function. And after dividing by t divided by 2, we get this transfer function. We therefore model the delay introduced by sampling and zero order hold as a pole at minus 2 over t. When the sampling frequency is high, this pole will be far from the origin of the s-plane and it will not have a significant effect on the dynamics of the full system. However, when the sampling frequency decreases, this pole moves closer to the origin and its influence on the full system will increase. When we do digital control by emulation, where we design a continuous controller first and then convert it to a digital controller, we will often capture the sample and hold dynamics by adding this transfer function to the plant before we design the continuous controller.